Hello community! In my last video we discovered Wizard Coder 34B, which is so much better than our Code Llama 34B. And we had a look here at GitHub. We looked at the code license, Apache 2, the data license, Wizard Coder. And we ask ourselves, hey, how is it possible that the official meta version of Code Llama in the Python fine-tuned version of 34 billion free trainable parameter is so worse in the performance compared to this clever wizard coder Python in another fine-tuning data set in the same size 34B? So how do you achieve a jump of 20 points in a specific benchmark human evaluation? Now, you might think that the answer is here in the official publication about Wizard Coder by Microsoft and Hong Kong Baptist University, but no, this is not the place where to find the solution. This is the paper, Wizard LM, empowering large language models to follow complex instruction. And here we are, here we find the solution. Here we have this evolve instruction a novel method using LLMs instead of humans to automatically mass produce open domain instruction of various difficulty levels. Or in my words, we have a complexity cascade of synthetically generated datasets. GPT-4 creates the datasets for us and we have a specific form, the instruction dataset. And it's not a simple instruction dataset, but it's an evolve instruction data set. So let's see what this means. You can read the original paper, but this is not so interesting because there's a real simple explanation. Think about your data set. In your data set here for fine tuning an LLM, for example, or a code base, normally your data set has a solid base with a lot of simple instruction. Here we have huge amount of very simple easy instruction. And then if we go up the complexity level, we have here now a reduced amount of more complex instruction. And then if we go to the top of our pyramid, we have here just a little tippy top minimum amount of really complex instruction for the fine tuning of our LLM. And yes, you, you guessed it already. This is here the solution. So, the more yeah, in the complexity of our task increases, the less training data our LLM have. So what is the solution? Well, think about instead of a pyramid, we have another form. So what we want is exactly to explain here this step. And the higher you get, the, the closer to the top of the pyramid you get the more training data are missing from our traditional instruction fine-tuning data set. Because we only have a little tiny bit here, only a minimum amount of really complex instruction so that the system, our LLM, can learn from this data set. So we need a better data set. We don't need a better model. Because you see, here Code Llama and Wizard Coder was also trained here on Code Llama, but the fine tuning data set for the Python fine tuning was different. And it was the data set that generated this jump. So here we go. Now imagine, instead of a pyramid, we have a cube. What is the difference? Now, a cube has not a, a tip. So we have a solid base with a lot of simple instruction, the same like in the pyramid. But in the middle, we have a good amount of complex instruction. And since we are here at the cube, we have the same good amount of really complex instruction. So this means if we increase the complexity of our instruction tuning, our data set has to expand. Now, here is a simple and oversimplification if you want. We have here our basic data set where we have here on the really if the complexity goes up. So here on the top of the pyramid, we only have a very limited amount of training data for the real complex instruction. So what we have to do, if we want now take this data set, this pyramid data set as our base data set, and in addition, generate data so that also here on the top level, we have here, we 
we generate synthetic additional data. So what we want, we have then the amount of data available at each complexity level is about the same. So the higher we get up here to the top, we have the same amount of data. So we have synthetically to generate this data set. Now, you could theoretically also generate it and hire some, some cloud workers or some, I don't know, part-time workers. But if we have a superior LLM, let's say like GPT-4, you can use an LLM to create synthetic data set. And we have two options, as you can see here. We can go here from the top and increase here the complexity. Or we can here, and this is the green arrow, go into the depth and simply add additional domains. So let's do this. In the paper that we're going to look at, they found that these two possibilities to extend the base data set to a more complex data set, instruction based, they say, okay, LLMs like GPT-4 can make or they can give instruction and create more complex instruction. And at the same time, as I showed you, we go now in the depth, it can create instruction that are equally complex, but completely different topics in completely different domains. So we expand our data set in a complexity cascade and we make a crossover domain shift. So let's do this. At first, as you can see, we go into the deep. So we have an instruction evolver, forget it. We have two paths forward. We go in depth evolving and in breadth evolving. Great. Now, the base data set can be an alpaca, it's a self instruct data set, or you can take a human slash uh, AI data set from Shear GPT. Anyway. In this specific wizard LM research paper, and they all have paper, they created here their in-depth evolving additional data set with five methodologies. They said, okay, so if we want to extend our base data set, we can add constraints to the commands, we can deepen the commands, we can be more concrete, more specific. We can increase the reasoning steps, or we can have a now a really complicated input structure. Now, isn't that great? So, of course, since we have GPT-4, we have here a cheap synthetic generator exactly for our five topics. So now let's look at each of those topics, how they, the authors of the paper, achieved it. Now, first, we add, we add a constraint to our data. Now, how we would create a synthetic data set? Simply, we take an LLM, we create a prompt, and the system should generate the data. GPT-4 should come up with additional data. So this is the prompt that the authors used. You will see that a lot of this is just housekeeping, and there's only one sentence that's really the essence here. You're not going to believe it. The complexity here of our prompt is breathtaking. So to add constraints, they say, please add one or more constraints or requirements into the given prompt. Unbelievable. Yes, we have an intelligent GPT-4. We can address it in human language. So we just tell the system, hey, add a constraint, do something. And since GPT-4 <clears throat> has copied parts or the whole internet, we have enough training data in GPT-4 that the system knows what this means based on the training data of GPT-4 itself. Second, we want to have a deepening of our prompt. Now, all the housekeeping again, this is the complete prompt your authors use, but again, I indicate here the main, the most important sentence. Again, really complex. To deepen the prompt, we say, if a given prompt contains inquiries about certain issues, the depth and the breadth of the inquiry can be increased. So, in my words, simply increase the complexity of the prompt and GPT-4 will deliver. Third, 
be more concrete, be more specific in the prompt. And you're not going to believe here the prompt, as you see here. Please replace some general concepts with a more specific concept. Breathtaking, isn't it? Increase the reasoning step. Now you know how we do this. We are very intelligently saying, hey, give them a prompt that can be solved with just a few simple thinking processes. You, GPT-4, can rewrite it to explicitly request multi-step reasoning. GPT-4 will deliver. And for the last of our five, we make now a complicated input. Now, this is a little bit tricky because this complicated, what does it mean? So we have to use ICL or in-context demonstration. So simply, this is our prompt, part one and part two. And in the first part, we tell GPT-4 in our prompt, hey, listen, I give you here examples, demonstration instruction one, demonstration instruction two, and you give here the LLM, GPT-4, N-1 examples. And then you say again, hey, you act as a prompt writer and you guessed it. So very easy. The whole work is done just by defining the right kind of prompt. Prompt engineering, a little bit ICL, as I show you, and this is it. So great. Now we have here, we increased here the complexity. So we are here and we generated the data here now completely. So we moved here from a pyramid structure in the, in the complexity to here, more or less a box. And now we have to provide adapt different additional domain knowledge to it. So this is what we call here green arrow, green heading, in red evolving. So what we do, we enhance the topic coverage, the skill coverage, and overall the data set diversity. So how we do it? Again, we need synthetic data sets. So we ask GPT-4 again, hey, could you please design a prompt to generate a completely new instruction based on the given instruction, like the tip here of the pyramid, requiring the new instruction to be more long-tailed. And if you think, my goodness, how complex could our prompt be with GPT-4? Well, you're not gonna believe it, here is it. We yeah. tell GPT-4, hey, you act now as a prompt generator. Your goal is to draw inspiration from a given prompt to create a brand new prompt. Amazing. This new prompt should belong to the same domain as the given prompt, but be even more rare. For example, if you want to stay within the domain. The length and the difficult level of the created prompt should be similar to that of the given prompt. So, as you see here, since we do this here for each and every level of the pyramid, we say if we are here at the top complexity, all our green uh, additional generated data should have the same complexity. So we fill up here the top layer now into the depth. And then we fill up the next layer, multi-domain, next layer, multi-domain, and here we go. So you see, this is a very simple prompt and you have immediately an idea how you can optimize here this prompt, but this is not about it. This is just to understand what happened with Wizard LM. Okay, when we have this and we have created our prompt, well, we have now the generation. We activate the prompt and GPT-4 gives us a result back. Unbelievable. We get all the prompts back and the results of the prompts back and we find out sometimes GPT-4 is hallucinating, sometimes it's, it's nonsense. So we need to filter out the results that we will not use for the additional fine tuning data set. So what we do, we have an elimination evolving or simply a cleaning procedure. What is it? Easy, when the generated response by GPT-4 contains sorry, for example, this keyword, we delete it, or if it's too short, or it just has some stop words, or it just contains punctuation, we just have to filter those specific comments out because we want a high quality data set. And now, now we have it. Now we have our Evolve Instruct fine tuning data set. 
And now this is the beauty. If we have this data set, it doesn't depend what, what LLM you choose. Llama 1, Llama 2, Llama 3, I don't know. So this is now the fine tuning step of our LLM with this expanded additional evolved instruction fine tuning data set that GPT-4 created for us. Absolutely automatically created if you want, you can hire some additional, I don't know, a human labeler to have some verification, but we are just want to understand the methodology. So we have this and then we just go and we fine tune our model. They did it here and they used here the evolve instruct here to fine tune the open source Llama 17B model and they called the model wizard language model. Isn't this amazing? And this is exactly the methodology now when they published two days ago. Now the wizard coder based on code Llama, Llama 2. This is exactly what they did. They adapted the evolve instruct method I just presented to you now to the domain of coding of Python code. This is it. This is all there was to this new method. Wasn't this beautiful? Now I know you might say, hey, I learned something today and I have new ideas. So what are the new ideas? The authors here used simple prompt. Remember for the five cases, they, they constructed really similar prompts. There was not a lot of genius whatever in there. Simple prompts. But today we know that we can advance this with agent, especially with autonomous deciding agent that decide each and every case on a specific uh, data, on specific conditions. Or you might say, hey, GPT-4 has some restriction on the legal side, so I don't have a very narrow topic. I don't need here GPT-4 and it's almighty, no, the whole internet. I can build here for a specific narrow domain, for example, for theoretical physics or uh, astrophysics, I can build a, for only this domain my own LLM. I pre-train a very small LLM. I fine-tune it on, I don't know, two, the latest 2000 archive preprint. And then I have created my personal LLM. And I can use this with this Evolve instruction fine-tuning data set to achieve a real exceptional performance in the high complexity domain. Or you might say, hey, wait a minute, we just use here a single prompt. So if you go from prompts to agents, why are we not using here multi-agent systems? Welcome, I had the same idea. You see, we had the same idea about it. So I decided today uh, in my YouTube channel, you find a new YouTube playlist. And I have now a playlist about autonomous AI agents about large language model, vision language model, and vision language action robotics model, the old transformer based. So if you want here an introduction, then I show you how to create three agents with one prompt. I show you how you create multiple agents that interact with each other also with one prompt. And yeah, then we go AWS, Bedrock Agents, and so on. So if you want to learn about Autonomous Agent, I have a complete playlist for you. But you say, okay, now we have this, but what about we, we would like to experiment? Now that we understand the mythology of Wizard L Adam, Wizard Coder, how can we extend this? What is the next technology jump that's going to happen? Now let's think we have a coding agent. And this coding agent, we just discussed it, is wizard coder with 34 billion free trainable parameter. So we have an agent specific for Python coding. And at the core of our agent, we have a large language model that was trained for a particular task for Python. Now, the same we have here LLM as an agent. And you see this if you go to my instruction, you see here the definition. And I have here my API LLM. So this is from the very beginning of agents when we were working with GPT-3 plus an API external connectivity 
where we introduced the concept of agent for the first time with LLM. But if you use LLM as an agent itself, like we did with Gorilla, where we had an API LLM created, we have a second agent. Yeah, so now you know I enter now multi-agent. What about we have a company and we have really protected, private, top secret internal data from our customer. We have some corporate knowledge agent. So this is my LLM behind my corporate firewall. This can be a Llama 2 model or whatever you have. It can be a simple, I don't know, decoder only version. Whatever LLM or whatever system you have, you can create an agent out of this. And I showed you, what about also a reasoning agent? And the, 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 the task of the reasoning agent is to be really have a wide domain knowledge so I use here GPT-4 and the reasoning agent now has the task to connect everything. So let's say I give the reasoning agent a certain task and this reasoning agent reads my task, GPT-4 analyzes my query, my user query and says, okay, step one, I do this, step two, step three, and has a list of things to do. So maybe the first step is to connect to some external data sources. And since we have here an API LLM, Gorilla, I say, hey, I want to find the top 10 hugging face models for a particular performance. So I create here exactly the connectivity to this LLM as an agent. Or if I want here to execute some code to do some calculation, you get it, reasoning agent says, okay, step two, after I get this back, now I have the data, now perform some calculation with coding Python. We get the result back and then I say, okay, given the result, I connect now to my private corporate knowledge uh, agent and I have there my data collection, my interplay, and then I get an answer back. So you see, multi-agent, how they interact can be really, really interesting. And if you would like to have a real-time example, here in this video, Interactive LLM Agents, I show you in real-time how I code it and how the system behaves. So you get a good idea how it is working. Now, we do not need any lang chain at all because we have created from our databases and from our data stores, we have created LLMs. So we don't need a database access because we have increased here the system intelligence from, I don't know, a vector store to an LLM. Great. What else? Now I use here another agent or another, if you want GPT-4 instance, as a central intelligence for the coordination of our autonomous decision-making. Because, yes, you might find out, maybe here we encounter a problem. Now, the corporate knowledge agent cannot help us if it's something happening here and the coding agent cannot help. So I need some supervisor level, if you want. I call it central intelligence. I have some videos about this. And the central intelligence is responsible for the interplay and if there happens to be a problem where one agent just dies, what to do, how to find alternatives and do it without my human decision, but find an autonomous decision yourself. Now, I have also a video where I show you that I give the central intelligence also the possibility to decide to create new agents. You can have agents that you define, that the system defines, given the external query you ask GPT-4 to perform. And maybe GPT-4 decides, hey, I need a new agent, a new very specific export system that I define. And being GPT-4, knowing the complete internet, GPT-4 can define here this new agent. And this new agent might have tools or interfaces or whatever you might call it here. And you can then interconnect here with the other agents, multi-agent system dynamics.
Without any lang chain, we are already at the next level. Beautiful. But since I learned that YouTube has to be entertainment, yeah, beautiful. So let's do a Gedanken experiment. Let's say, since we're talking about LangChain, take all functionalities of LangChain. Every code, every bit of code, every functionality, every connectivity that LangChain has, and create a large language model from all LangChain data. This is easy. We, we do it every day. You take a database, you take a data repository, and you train an LLM particular on this data. Beautiful. So we have now a LangChain LLM. I wonder, by the way, why this does not exist yet, but who cares? So, and then, now this is the exercise to be more entertaining as a YouTube video, if you like to have some Gedanken experiment. Think about it. What is LangChain LLM that we just created here still missing in the functionality, in the interplay of multi-agents, multi-autonomous agents, that have an LLM augmentation, as I'll show you here with the, with the core functionality, what is LangChain LLM still missing compared to my central intelligence? Think about it. There are some outstanding features that a LangChain today cannot do that a CI that I showed you in my videos in the new YouTube playlist I could already do. So if you follow this Gedanken experiment and you ask yourself, hey, this LangChain LLM, you will understand what LangChain will create, what it will come up with in the next month, because I think this is a really interesting Gedanken experiment. So this was it for the information. I hope it was informative. Yes, and I had some outlook. I presented some new ideas you might try to experiment with. And if you want here to dive into this Gedanken experiment, why not leave me your answer here in the description of this YouTube video and tell me what do you think, Langchain LLM? What is still missing compared to a central intelligence? I see you in my next video.